Okay, so then the last thing I want to say about this is as you're exploring, you're use, utilizing your tools of meandering through the scales, through the chords, all these different things. You're utilizing those expressive vocal uh, elements. You're thinking about phrasing. You're thinking about your dynamics. All these different things are happening. The other thing that I want you to be thinking about uh, as we do this is just knowing some licks, some patterns. My notes are over here, so I'm just thinking about uh, some of the things that you could do. Again, this isn't a licks and patterns course. I've got all kinds of courses that you can look at. You know, you can jump wherever you want and look at information about learning some licks. But what is a lick? What is a pattern? Well, a lick is a repetitive idea, right? If I go... Now, again, the speed at which I can play it... Let me get my jam track back here. The speed at which I can play it is perfectly fine, and it's something I want to develop in my practice mindset. When this music starts, what I have to do is figure out, can I make it work? Can I make it work in this jam track? And am I making it work in a connected way or in a free time way, right? That's, that's what I got to figure out. So that's free time. Now, if I wanted to, Now that might be good. I think I would probably wind up because I want more energy out of that, that particular lick. I'd probably play it faster in more of a free time space, but these are things that you have to think about when you're trying to build a repetitive idea. That, rep that repetition is what people catch on to. Let's just basic like blues. Sorry. Just repetition in general is something that we need. Now listen to that one. Let me go back here. See how it builds energy? You get this kind of aggression. And again, I what you might have noticed there is I was picking it a little softer and then a little louder. I was keeping each note separate and then I started playing them together. So it's it keeps adding this element of dissonance, which makes it sound more powerful as I keep going. And I'm I'm aware of that. That's what I want. Okay. So repetition licks don't have to be fast. You know, it just depends on what you want them to be. But but a lick, the idea of a lick is that it's getting repeated. It's an idea that gets repeated. A pattern or a sequence, for me, is like a lick that gets repeated in different places. Right? So if I was to go... Um... The lick is that. The repetition, what makes it a pattern is that idea, you see? So it's nice to have licks because you, you, as you're meandering and you're making these connections and you get somewhere and you play something that you really liked and it, it felt good and then you go back and you do it again, you go back and you do it again, you go back and do it again, you start building this energy, right? It's just this rotation that starts going and it doesn't need to be faster necessarily, it's just in that, that rotation. Now, again, it's gonna lose that energy if you're going... Right? If you're playing really slow, th the, those repetitive ideas don't have as much impact. If you're going to play really, really slow, you're better off connecting to the, the melody. Now that sounds way more effective than... You see what I'm saying? 
So at those slow paces, it's okay to do a lick here and there that's slower. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes the, the energy comes from that repetition and the building of that, that strength. So if I did this. See what I mean? I can move back and forth. So this lick added a lot more energy. Again, I would never start with something like that unless the song is already built to that and now here comes the solo and the solo needs to just come in and knock it out of the park. Well, then I might start with something like that because if the song is already built up to that and here comes that solo that I'm going to improvise and I come out going... I'm taking all this energy that the band has built and it's just getting sucked out. You see? So it all depends on the situation. Right? So that's why I've given you a host of different jam tracks that are vastly different from each other for different reasons. It doesn't need mean to you that you need to use all these tracks equally and one backing track's going to feel bad if you don't use it. It doesn't matter which ones work best for you. Right? That's that's what we're we're trying to to find here.